the Seattle Kraken hire Dan Bilesma as their new head coach. Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Sports Show where we love Seattle Pro Sports. I'm your host, Mikey, and today we are talking about the announcement that the Seattle Kraken made of hiring Dan Bilesma as their new head coach. All right, and again, I'm not a hockey expert, okay? I'm not going to claim to be, claim to be, and I'm not going to pretend to be. So I'm just going to go straight to the numbers, and we can go over how good the resume uh, is of Dan Bilesma and why he obviously is a great choice to be the new head coach. Uh, he has been coaching for the minor league team for the Seattle Kraken, the, the um, Coachella Valley Firebirds. And this season, they have the best Western Conference record. Uh, last year, they made it all the way to the Calder Cup Finals. Uh, he's got 94 wins total with the Coachella Valley Firebirds in their first two seasons. He has been the head coach for Team USA in the 2014 Olympics. He was in the 2010-2011 season the Jack Adams Award winner, which means he was the best coach in uh, the league. He's won a total of 320 NHL games. He was the fastest coach in NHL history to reach 200 wins. He has six playoff appearances. And 2008-2009 season, he won the Stanley Cup as the head coach of the Penguins. And that is a season he took over halfway through the season and then turned that team around and, you know, won the Stanley Cup. So, yeah, the the resume speaks for itself. Uh, now, just watching the press conference, um, you know, I really like what he had to say. Uh, again, talking about how in today's game, you really have to be able to relate to the player, and he's taken time to learn how to do that um, because he was a player once himself, and, um, you know, him playing in the 90s, being coached a certain way, and then getting, you know, head coaching jobs in the 2000s, he was used to doing things a certain way and, and being a certain way. Uh, so much to the point where he had to learn the hard way. That's not how it works these days, right? So players have a little bit more agency in it, uh, and um, demand a little bit more respect than these two. You know, you can't just walk all over them. Um, you know, and sounds like maybe that's what he was doing. Uh, when he was a coach himself, and yeah, just wasn't working for today's uh, players. So he had to find out the hard way that that can get you fired. Uh, from what I understand, his last stop was in Buffalo, and basically star players said they weren't going to come back if he was there. Uh, type of thing that's how much uh he had started to you know have friction with players um and again that's what i really loved about today's press conference is you know he said he still had the passion for the game and still had the passion to be a head coach so um you know he took the opportunity to be with the kraken organization here and be a head coach with the amateur team and really uh, work on his coaching abilities as well and being able to connect and relate to and 
uh, you know, nurture today's uh, players. And obviously has been working out well. Uh, like they've been getting great success down there in the minor league system with the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Uh, you know, making it to the finals last year, ultimately losing, but they made it there. And uh, as of right now, in the final four, uh, yeah, I know after today's press conference, he was getting on a plane to go back to join the Coachella Valley Firebirds for the first game in their next series. Uh, but yeah, I just, I, I loved hearing him talk about how he has made adjustments into just who he is as a person and, and how to coach, uh, and how to relate and connect to, uh, players today. You know, he seemed like he had a good amount of charisma. You know, I have no doubts that he can lead the team. And another reason why I think he could be a great choice is because he has been with the minor league team. He's helped develop, you know, the Maddie Meneers, the Shane Wrights, the, Riker Evans, all the players that you want to see develop, he helped develop them. And he can now, now that he's stepping into the head coach role, um, you know, at the NHL major league level, uh, he can help continue to develop those players and hopefully get them to their full potential. So, oh yeah, overall, I'm really excited about this hire. Uh, again, I'm not a hockey expert, so uh, I was listening to a lot of other shows today. And, uh, well, for the last few weeks or, uh, you know, month, ever since uh, Dave Haxall got fired, I've been listening to a lot. And, you know, it seemed like uh, Dan Bilesma was a lot of people's top choice. A lot of people were hoping this guy would get the job and that he would be good for the job. And that's just great to hear. Uh, because in general, going back, you know, I started doing some research about Dave Hackstall uh, and his hiring here at the time. And it seems like it's the complete opposite. It, I can't really find anybody that was excited about that hire or even thought that hire was a great hire for the first coach of your organization. Now, that being said, I am feeling like Ron Francis, the GM, I got to have him on a little bit. I got to put him on the hot seat a little bit, you know, uh, because like I said, going back and doing a research, you know, I can't really find anybody, not even locally, right? You know, no, normally your 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 fan accounts on YouTube, uh, social media, your local radio stations, local newspapers, they're going to be the ones that kind of are just excited uh, and, and positive uh, about you know, a new franchise starting it and uh, a new head coach, right? But I, I didn't see that for Dave Hackstall. A lot of people didn't think it was really good to hire at all at the time. So, I mean, makes me wonder, like, why did Ron Francis think that was the right move at the time then? And now we saw what he did from last year's team who made the playoffs and how um, he decided to go about uh, readjusting the roster this year. And now he missed the playoffs and looks like we took a step back. Okay, so you, the, you're telling me he didn't hire the right head coach from the get-go, who he now fired. He... Uh, you know, mismanaged the roster on who to keep, who to sign, uh, who to let go, all that this season, so that you underperform and you miss out on the playoffs. Yeah, you you you're going to be on the hot seat now because why why did he make that hire at the time if it was not the right hire? Now, everybody's saying this is the right hire, but if it ends up being that 
Bilesma just doesn't have it anymore uh, at the NHL level, then uh, Ron Francis really has to be on the hot seat for d- decision making, right? And and building this organization, both roster wise and uh, staff wise, right? I mean, that's another big part of the GM's role is getting the right staff in. And again, just doesn't sound like anybody thought the staff was the right staff, or especially, you know, the most important position, the head coach was the right one to bring in uh, on the first hire in the first place. So you have to get this one right. Um, it, it, again, to me, it just it just really doesn't look good now that I've gone back and done research that that Dave Hacksaw was a hire if he just nobody thought that was you know going to be the best choice in the first place. So we'll find out uh, if Dan Bilesma is the right choice here, uh, you know. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, they still need to bring in more players uh, for this roster, and they need to find an identity. So that's what I want to see out of Ron Francis next. So far, okay. If you, if we're saying, hey, you already made a mistake. Um, but now you got rid of that mistake and hopefully you are replacing it with the right choice now. Now we got to look at the roster and you got to say, bring the players in here and build an identity and get the players that fit that identity. Uh, because again, watching the team this season, there was just no... There's no identity. There was when I when I watched the games, it felt like okay, I have no clue what this team is, what they're trying to be, uh, or if they even know <laughs> what they're trying to be. You know, and and I kind of put that uh, on Ron Francis uh, a little bit. He's got to take some of the blame because he's responsible for building that roster. So I, I don't know how short a leash he should be on, but it's. It's got to be pretty short to me. I mean, if, if, if this thing isn't turned around in, in two seasons, then I, I'm seriously taking a look at um, if, we really, if we really have the right GM. But we'll see. Uh, you know, just in general, I'm excited that we got a new head coach and that, uh, you know, all the people that I listen to who are the hockey experts are saying that this guy... Um, is the right guy and you know like i said when you look at his resume it 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 backs that up so uh now let's go get the players let's get the right players bring them in here and let's make this happen i want to get back into the playoffs and i know the the seattle fan base they really want to get back to the playoffs as well we don't want to have another season where we are just losing (laughs) at home all the time all right. So, yeah, let me know. What do you think of this Dan Biles Uh I know there's a lot of hockey fans out there who are just, you know, salivating and waiting for uh, the Kraken to uh, be a consistently good team. Right. Uh, I see the passion of the hockey fans. Uh, I see, you know, the... the I, I see people wearing the sweaters, the hoodies, the jerseys, like all over the place. Um, so the the passion uh, in the city for the hockey team is there. Uh, they just got to put the product on the ice that, uh, you know, is worth watching. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Let me know what you think of this hire, uh, and how you think this will, uh, hopefully turn this team around. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well. Leave those comments, podcast listeners hit follow, hit subscribe, leave a five-star rating and a written review on Apple podcast. Cause that helps the show grow as well. 
And thanks for listening to the Seattle Sports Show where we watch Legends Awaken. So take cover because with the sea of sound, you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever.